In this lesson, I'm going to walk through a project so you can get a sense of how things are all put together. This is just going to be a demonstration, but if you want to follow along, you can. And to do that, just open up the Working Files folder, and then open up the Photoshop PSD files. And this is a process we're going to follow in many of the upcoming lessons, so you might as well get used to this routine. Now open up this project by just double-clicking on it here, 0202 Walkthrough. This project consists of five video clips down here and some text over a rounded rectangle background, and a picture and a picture over here, like that, and a music bed, as they call it. And before I discuss it in some detail, I want to show you the end result. I rendered this as a video, and that's what you always have to do when you finish working on a video project. You need to convert it into a video file that people can view. And I provided that video for you so you could get a look at the finished project. And so to do that, I'm going to minimize Photoshop for a moment here. I'm going to go back to the working files here, and open up other assets. And at the top there is 0202 walkthrough video. I'm going to double click on that. Go full screen here. And this is that project. Hear the natural sound of the water, the text. I'm going to jump ahead to the picture in a picture and go to the end here where the audio fades out. There you go. And you can look at that thing in its entirety. It's 45 seconds long to get a sense of how that thing is all put together. Let's go back to Photoshop now. All right, let's just run through this and see how things are all put together. First of all, I'm working in what's called the Motion Workspace. If you go up here to the top, normally you're going to work in probably the Essentials Workspace. And I'm going to reset the Essentials so it's back to its normal look when you're working in the Essentials. Basically, it's a document with layers, and these are the kinds of panels that show up there. But when I work with video, I switch to the Motion Workspace, which looks like this. Go over here to Motion. And if I want to get it so that we're all equal here, I'm going to reset Motion just to make sure we're on the same page. Looks like that. Motion pops up the timeline down here and also puts a histogram up here and leaves a layers panel over here. So it's basically the same as the Essentials Workspace with the addition of the timeline down here. I can expand the view of the timeline by just dragging here. I put my cursor between those two lines so it gets to be a double-headed arrow. I can lift it up like that. So I'm going to take a look at all the various tracks, as they're called down here. It says Video Group 2, Video Group 1, and a couple other things. But these are, in essence, tracks, like video tracks in a typical video editing product. You can see that things are organized like this over here, but the Layers panel is really where this organization comes from. You can see we have Video Group 2 here and Video Group 1. Video Group 2 is above Video Group 1. You see the order here is the same order as they appear here from top to bottom. Let's open up video group one down here, and you see we have five video clips here. The little icon there tells you it's a video clip. And you see that this one is video clip scenic one, and scenic two as we go across there. So you notice that from left to right, the clips go from the bottom to the top. If I were to take this number two one here and drag it to in front of video one, you'll see that it switches positions here now inside the layers panel. That's just the way it's structured here. I'm going to undo that by doing Control or Command Z get things back in order. After I put these clips here in the timeline, I trimmed them, I shortened them from their original lengths. You could tell the relative lengths of the clips based upon how long they are here. Each rectangle represents some time. If you look over at the beginning, that's zero, zero, that's the beginning. And right over here, it's about six seconds or so. This little blue thing here in the top there is called the time insertion point. Kind of a long way to describe this little blue guy. In other products, this might be called the current time indicator or shortened down to just the bug. In any event, you can move this through there. You can actually watch your video play. I'm just dragging it now as I drag it through there. There you go. Between each clip, I have transitions. You can see the little transitions there. They're called crossfades here in Photoshop. The crossfades are a certain length. You can adjust the length. If I hover over here, you can see that I get this little trim tool. It allows me to change the length of the crossfade. It's the same as the trim tool that's used to trim the clips, where I can trim them, make them shorter or longer like that. Just as you can layer images and graphics and text inside Photoshop, you can layer them here inside the timeline. So I have this rounded rectangle right there. If I just Alt-click on it or Option-click on it, it'll isolate it just so you can see just that graphic. I'm going to Alt-click, Option-click on it again so you can see everything. Same thing is true for the text. If I Alt or Option-click on it, see we can isolate that layer. Here's that layer over here in isolation. It's not in a group. It's just a single clip inside this track. This is video group two, but it has only one object in it, this video clip called Time Lapse One. If I move the current time indicator, the time insertion point, and put it over here, you can see that if I undo this little guy here by Alter Option clicking on it. There you go. This is a picture in a picture. 
If you take a look at this, you'll see that it's a smart object layer. You need to convert it to a smart object layer if you want to create something like this where it's shrunk down in size and actually moves a little bit. As we go forward here, you'll see that it gets a little bit larger. That's called animation here inside Photoshop. We're animating the size of it. We're animating the transform properties. If I open up this little disclosure triangle over here, you'll see it has keyframes. These are called keyframes. These indicate the beginning and the end of a change. So this first keyframe over here says it's going to start its life at that size. And this keyframe over here says that's the size it's going to grow to by this point. So it's the beginning of the change, the end of the change. Down here in opacity, it's similar. We've got four keyframes here. That's because the first keyframe says, OK, at the beginning of this whole clip, it's going to be transparent. Then when we get to this keyframe over here to the right, it'll be 100% opaque. This keyframe will sustain it to 100% opacity, like that. Keeps 100% from that point to that point. But then right here at this keyframe, it starts getting transparent. Eventually fades away. So you can use keyframes to animate things like layer styles, opacity, and position and size, like that, transform properties. You can also adjust volume. So I go down here, I take a look at each clip here, click on this little flyout triangle there like that. You can see you can adjust some video characteristics towards its duration and speed. You can make it fast motion, slow motion. But on the audio side here, you can change the overall volume level. Now at the beginning here, these clips were fairly noisy, these waterfalls, fairly loud. So against the music, they were too loud. So to make sure they weren't too loud, I clicked on this little flyout here, clicked on audio, and dropped the volume level down to 15% of the original audio level. I also faded it in, so the audio starts at silence and fades up to 15%, about one second into the clip. At the end of the clip, it fades out. It takes about a fifth of a second to fade out. I can do that with every clip. Click away here. Every clip can have that kind of characteristic applied to it in terms of the overall volume level and the fade in and fade out. This third clip was relatively quiet. It's just a little waterfall kind of in the woods. It's a little trickle there, so it didn't need to be turned down so much. So here the audio is not down to 15%. It's more like half volume. So you can adjust them individually like that. You can also have music, narration, sound effects down here in these audio tracks. This is one audio track, but you can have multiple audio tracks. If I open this one up over here, it too has the same kind of volume fade in and fade out, but there's no video control here because it's just an audio track. So I set the volume to 56%. I faded it in, faded it out. Give it a long fade out, two and a half seconds. We can also apply layer styles to these guys. So it's text layer, for example. Open this up. We have a layer style for it. We've got bevel and emboss and drop shadow on the layer style for the text. And for the rounded rectangle, we have those as well, plus a gradient overlay. So you can apply layer styles to your layers here. You can also apply filters. So there you go. That's a basic structure of a typical video project here inside Photoshop.